Hi everyone, Michael here. I'm gonna teach a class today on painting, um, specifically painting with gouache, which is this uh, medium I have here. It looks a lot like watercolor, actually, especially because I have the same company's watercolors. Um, they look exactly the same, but in small writing, let's see, I'll focus my camera. I don't know if you can read this, but in small writing, it says artist watercolor on this one. It says artist gouache on this one. But there's a lot of different brands of gouache. They act sort of like acrylic paint, I think. But sort of like water in that you need water to activate it. So I have some water. I have my five colors of gouache. I have red, yellow, blue, and then black and white. Got my paper, which is watercolor paper I cut into a five by seven sheet um, because I have some five by seven frames. And I like to, if, my, if it turns out, it'd be nice to put it up on the wall and frame it. So um, I took this picture in 2018, I believe, just before the fire um, that burnt it down. This is the Honey Run Bridge, of course, and my friend um, was getting married on it. And uh, so I was taking pictures around the area. This is one of them. I think this was during the rehearsal. Rehearsal for the wedding. Anyways, number one, I chose this picture because I think it's meaningful in, in that it's a piece of history that's no longer there. But also, I really like the... Um, greens and the blue and the red um, so I'm gonna give it a shot here uh, first thing I need to do is pour out my gouache so I have red I'm gonna put here red. and I'm just gonna squeeze out a good amount I do know that gouache will keep for a long time um, in these trays Even if it dries up, you can just add water to it and it will pick back up, which is an interesting thing about gouache and unique to gouache is that even after it's dried on the picture, you can just add water to your brush and still mess around with it, even if it's like a year later. So that's kind of fun. But you don't want to overwork it. So today, as always, I want to start with the biggest shapes I see and I'm going to actually sketch it out real quick in pencil. Um, so if we look over here to our picture, I see a lot of diagonal lines happening in the roof and in the floor, and then even in the mountain range coming the opposite way. I really like that, so I want to make sure I get that effect in it. So I'm going to start um, carving away. So I'm just going to do that top diagonal line that almost looks like it comes right down to the center of the picture like this. Um, I do hope this is visible. Mm, hold on. I'm gonna actually bring the camera down here. Bear with me. Here we go, come for a ride. Down to here. I think this might, once I get it settled, I think this might be a little bit more visible for you. There we go. Yeah. It's not all the way clear, but. But that'll do. All right, so you can see my pencil line. I'm kind of being light because I don't want it to show through. Though the gouache is so opaque, I don't think it will, even if I'm heavy-handed. So then there's a diagonal line, a little bit shallower, coming this way, and under the... under there, like that. And this vertical line comes down somewhere, I'm not going to get to the detail, but... So this is the mountain, this is the top of the bridge, and then the roof starts again here, and follows pretty much the same angle 
all the way down off the page like that. Okay, and then the reason I'm doing it in pencil before is just because I can erase pencil pretty easy and um, I want to make sure it, all the biggest shapes look good on here before I go ahead and start the more um, time-consuming process of painting. Like that. And then there's the other line, which is about that low, and it comes in skinnier, like that. Okay, and then there's the lines of the uh, red pillars coming down. So we've got maybe one of them here, and then one of them is attached to this line. Something like that. This one's probably a little skinnier. Okay, and then there's this big rock in the front. So um, that comes up like this. And then down this side like that. And then there's another rock. I guess it's probably cement. I'm holding on to this one. Cement with some rocks in it. Okay, so I got most of the parts. I'll hold it up. I'm going to try to do it the same size as. Uh, let's see. It's kind of hard to figure this out. Yeah, that looks about right. What do you think? There you go. Mm, yeah. Okay. So. I think one thing, maybe I, I uh, made this angle, let's see, I'm going to hold it up like this so I can actually see it a little better. Mm, that looks pretty good. I think I made maybe this angle a little bit too sharp. Maybe I should just go down like, and then there. I think that'll do. And then there's that darkness that comes under about that long. This line I actually have curving kind of to the right, and I want it to actually, not looking at it, it kind of goes, it bows out a little bit like that. And uh, this one might be steeper. Cool. It's important to get these angles right so that you get the effect, uh, the, uh, it looks correct. Man, which this line here I think should be so shallow. There we go. All right, so now that I have that, I can start painting. Yes. So I'm gonna start with this bigger brush. I have a huge brush, but I don't think this paper is even gonna handle this. If I was using watercolor, I might do this for the first few layers um, to get a nice translucent um, layer which means kind of see-through just for a background but since I'm using gouache and it's all opaque I'm just gonna um, start with this this one which is also pretty big if you can see it's probably an inch or so so let's see going to my colors over here. They look darker in the camera just because of my light is positioned, but what can you do? Um, that might be a better way to hold it. So uh, which part should I start with? I think I'm going to start with the blue of the sky. Ah, actually, I'm going to do the green grass just to see how green I can get with this because I don't have green, I have yellow and blue, which I can mix together to make green. But sometimes the greens that get mixed are a little bit um, underwhelming. So I want to make sure not to use too much water, because I've done gouache before, and I kind of think I use too much water. So now I have this nice, a little bit more blue, 
So I'm mixing the colors here, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's not all the way mixed, and I kind of like it like that. So with that, oh, I forgot one line, which is the bottom of these mountains. So that actually looks like maybe like that. So I want to start the, the um, grass right below the mountains. Uh, maybe a little bit of hair of water. Kind of just mix it up till it's workable, till it's nice and smooth. There we go. Because I don't want dry brush techniques, not yet. And I'm just going to go ahead and put these in like this. So I'm finding you don't need much water at all for gouache. This brush might be a little bit too big for my purposes here, but that's okay. I'm just going to stick with it for now, at least for the grass. All right, now I'm going to do this area down here. Add a little bit more blue because it's darker. Should be darker um, under the bridge than up on the hill. There we go. Just get a little bit more paint on there. So yes, uh, as uh, as I said last week on when painting, I think it's important to try different mediums and not just stick to you know the thing whatever you used you're used to drawing with. And you might be really good at it. But that's whenever I get good at something, I know, hmm, what more can I do? If I feel comfortable with drawing with pencils, then I'm not in a state of learning how to draw with pencils. That means I'm just comfortable. But if I seek out different things to paint with, to draw with, they all help each other. So that one, I. Maybe if I practice with gouache, and then I go back to going on pencil, drawing with pencil, I'll be even better than I, than I was when I left the pencil. Uh, because everything kind of informs everything else with art. I would even say that practicing painting makes me a better musician. That might sound funny, but I feel that way. Uh, there's also this tree. So I'm going to use a little bit more yellow in just to maybe make it a little bright. And this tree kind of comes about to here, goes under. I've been wanting to use gouache for a while. Um, but. I was kind of intimidated by learning something new and spending a little bit of money on the paints. It's like, well, I have plenty of other stuff I could practice. Why, why I grabbed another medium? But like I said, I think it's important to to try these new things, even if you're not fully comfortable yet. All right, so I got a good base of green down. It's a little bit more of a yellow green than it's in, in the picture, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna stick with this brush, even though it's not really. Oh, I think a, a harder bristled brush. This bris this brush has very kind of soft bristles. Maybe a little bit harder bristled brush would have been better. That's okay. Um, I'm gonna go to the sky. Which, first of all, I want to make sure my water is nice and clean. And I want to get some white on my palette. Where is that? Because uh, this blue is pretty dark. So unlike watercolor, watercolor you use the paper to get your white and you just use more water. But with gouache, you actually got to use some white paint to lighten your colors up. All right. Something like that. There's a hair. Okay. Now I'm just going to go over the whole sky with this blue. Um, because I'm going to go back over for the clouds. So 
So gouache is really good at making these big areas of flat color. And then I'm going to actually pick some up with my paper towel, just to see how that works with gouache. It seems to be picking it up decently. Very cool. Alright, so now that I still have this um, light blue, I'm going to go ahead and add some, some of that to this green and see if I can get a light green that I can add on on top of some of these leaf areas, especially in the up here. So that's what I'll do now. I feel a little lighter green. I'm gonna go over some of this areas up on the hill and a little bit in the foreground here. Foreground is the opposite of background. So when I say foreground, that means something that's closer to the viewer, closer to the camera in this case. Um, there's a little bit of grass coming down the hills if I look closely. Like this. Doop, doop, doop. Little trees kind of popping up. Alright. Um, oh yes, there's also some, a little bit of moss maybe on this Uh, rock in the foreground. Okay, that's good. So now I kind of want to do the base coat of the uh, um, bridge itself. So I think what I need to do is take this light blue that I have up here and add a little bit of red because it almost looks like a shad the shadow is a is of a purplish tint. So that's what I'm going to try to go for, like a grayish purple. So I have a little bit of blue and a little bit of uh, red, maybe a little bit more blue. Yeah, I think that's a good color for it. And again, I'm not going to mix it till it's all totally one color. Now just careful for pulls down. And the reason I'm not going to do it till it's all uh, mixed completely is that it's nice to have little variations in your color. Um, that means just like slightly different color as you as you move um, around as your eye moves around, and it just kind of helps. I'm going to go right over this green because I can always. Um, reapply the green. That's the cool thing about gouache, I think, is that you can layer things on top of each other, which you can't do. You can do it in acrylic paint or oil paint, but you can't do it with watercolor. So this is kind of a unique middle ground between the two, I think. I'm going to also use this uh, color that I have here. Looking around, I always try to think, like, where else could I use the same color? That kind of ties everything together. I'm gonna just paint the rocks in, though it's gotten kind of dark. Maybe I can. Oh, went a little bit too blue. Um, so I'm going to add red. See if we can knock this color back again. Okay. Now I have a darker purple. That's okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the rocks with that. And again, I'm just going to go right over these areas of green. Um, that kind of goes here. But this other back color rock is actually a little bit different, so I'm going to leave part of it. Uh, where else can I do this purpley color? Maybe a little bit of these um, maybe the lines going up. These vertical lines that are in the uh, hill up there. Cool. 
I think that's a good start here. Maybe a little bit more blue. And looking at the picture, I think that the bridge is actually a little darker than I made it, the base color. What I mean by base color is like without all the details, if you look under the darker areas, um, you can see that. Oh, and also, it's got this. Sorry. It's hard to talk while I'm painting. You can see all the details of like the cracks and the little holes in the wood and the details of the wood. So, and then while this is wet, I'm actually going to try to go for this um, black up at the top. And why I'm going to do that while it's wet is I think it'll seep down a little bit, which also kind of happens in my photo. So I'm just going to get this straight black, which usually I don't use, but I'm going to just play with it with gouache. And I'm going to do a nice hard line on top. And then I'm gonna go fade it into this other color under. Like mm -hmm. And something like that. And now I think I don't know if this will work. This is gonna be an experiment. But I'm gonna take some water and just run it right between the two. Because with watercolor, that'll blend it nicely. Um, and I'm not sure how it'll act with... Looks like it's doing a little bit of blending. I'm going to go ahead and help it by pulling down. Because I feel like that will help it. Cool. So I pulled, pulled some of the paint down. And that actually uh, started to warp the paper a little bit or like rip up little pieces of it but I think it kind of looks cool it m more makes it look like wood texture so I'm gonna let that area sit um, I'm gonna wait till I do the shadow on the bottom because I don't want it to be wet for that because I want a nice hard line so while I'm waiting for that one what else can I work on I think I'm gonna do this mountain up here this mountain range um, and that's a little bit of an orangish gray. I, it's a, I think it's really important to get comfortable with looking at the different types of grays that exist. Because if you look at the bridge, that's kind of a purpley gray. It's not quite like a purple. It's a purpley gray. And the, the mountains, they're also gray, but they're a little bit warmer of a color, maybe a little oranger. Definitely not as orange as this color I just mixed here. But then I think, what's the opposite of orange? Well, on the color wheel, I don't have one here. Do I? Oh yeah, I do. Uh, here's a color wheel. Um, so if I look at the opposite of orange, it's blue. So if I add blue to orange, I'll get more towards the middle, which is gray. So it, Here's a bright orange, but I want a gray orange, so I'm going to mix blue. I happen to have a little bit of blue in this color, so I'm just going to mix all this in and see what happens. Should get me a little bit grayer. Alright, you can see that bright orange. Now it's a little bit dimmer, but I think I need to get even further dimmer, so I'm going to add more blue. Just a little bit at a time. I think that was a little heavy, that's okay. And... Mix it in. Now it's looking a little bit green. So I know the opposite of green is red, so I need a little bit more red in there. Alright. Oh, this is looking pretty close. Still a little bit too orange, so I'm going to keep adding blue. Which is also darkening the color, because blue is a much darker color than this bright orange. But I think this is about the right color. Maybe even a little bit of orange in there and I can kind of keep them separate so I get multiple colors on my brush at once. Now I can take this color and kind of just sweep it up and you know what after this I should switch brushes because I'm getting into smaller areas which are a little bit it's interesting like the first brush 
is kind of a lighter color, but when I go over it the second time, that's when the real color sets in. Okay, I think that's great. Um, actually, before I switch brushes, I'm gonna, I think this is dry enough now that I can do that uh, black underside. So I'm gonna wet this black again. I'm actually gonna need, need to use a little bit more black. Black is such a powerful color in painting. It just knocks everything out of the way. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take that line all the way and goes down like this, like that, like that like that. All right. And then over here, I'm going to also go right over those trees again. Um, I almost wish I didn't start with them, but that's okay. Cool. That's looking pretty good. And see how it kind of doubles the paint load almost when I go over it a second time. Cool. So that really starts starts to give it some depth. There's also a little bit of black on this side of that pole. Go ahead and do that. Um, there's some on the side of this rock down here. So I'll go ahead and do that, and it's also somewhere here. Um, mm, I don't want to overdo the black, because, because it's such a powerful color, it also comes with great responsibility. Cool. There might be a case for adding one little line in here. So I think I'm going to try it. It's like right around here. Okay. Actually, I might be able to add, because this is so sharp on here, I can actually add pretty tiny little lines. That's cool. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, it's much darker down here, too. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Shadow. I'm now I'm treating the black as shadow. Like, where do I see the shadows? Especially in the bottom of the image, I do want it to be the darker part of the image. Um, there's also some trees going up, so I can make sure my blade is nice and sharp and cut some trees into there. And there's some going this way. Mm, then there's this actually this tree in the foreground here. Now that my black is a little diluted, it's becoming a little see-through, which is uh, helping actually for certain lines. So I'm flattening out my brush, and now I'm going to try to do some of these um, lines of where the boards split. So I have to be kind of careful. I'm actually just tapping my brush, my brush's sharp edge here. Keeping in mind the angle, I don't want to go too crooked or too straight up and down because there is a science to which directions these are supposed to lie. I might have went a little bit too much angle, so I'll watch that. On the bottom half, I'll try to keep that more in mind, so like that. Nice, okay, and then uh, more over here. I think that's working slightly, so I'll keep it up. Keeping them a little bit closer together as it gets further back. Also smaller, hypothetically, as it gets further back. Something like that. I mean, it's not perfect, but that'll do. Let's see, um, 
We're at 30 minutes. All right, so now I'm gonna try this, these uh, red, really kind of the focus of the picture to me is this, these red columns. So I'm gonna go straight red here. And get these in. Going from that side and then flipping it and going from this side. Mm -hmm. And the bottom one actually looks like there's a little bit of lighter red on the far right side. So I'm mixing, I mixed a little bit of white in before I did this last brush stroke. Cool. Now maybe even a little bit of black in for a slightly darker red right between the red and the black. There we go. So that gives it a nice turn around. Um, and then I'll use that darker red for the shadow of this one too. Cool. Because a flat color of red, if it, it would make it look, well, flat, but uh, a nice um, shadow on one side or a lighter side on one side, that that's what helps it look uh, three-dimensional and more realistic. Which isn't always the goal. Sometimes you don't want your art to look realistic. But for me today, I'm trying to practice my technique, which means trying to learn from nature, learn from photos. Cool. All right. Wash this brush, and I'm gonna set this brush aside and pick up a smaller one because um, that one's a little bit too big. So I have this brush that actually fine. It gets really fine at the end, and then I also have this one, which is a. Uh, really soft so I'm actually gonna look maybe I have something a little bit firmer than these because oh, after think about that last one maybe this one will do this is a still fairly large size brush um, a round brush this time though so Let's see how this does. What am I missing now? I think some some of the tree um, like leaves. So I'll build this one back up and then I will uh, fix the mountain. And I can see I did some of these lines too diagonal here. That's kind of messing up the perspective. So I'll have to fix that. Um, actually, let me see if I can fix that just by wetting So actually this is kind of working, it's giving it a nice texture. So I'm just kind of going against my grains here and picking up. This is the cool thing about gouache is you can sort of lightly scrub it and it will not quite erase but it will pick up the paint and push it wherever you want. So actually I do prefer that look to the harder lines. So, which means by making a mistake and trying to correct it, I just acquired a new technique, which is pretty cool. And that technique is just making a line and then smudging it so you get kind of a ghost of a line. Um, so hey, that's cool. Awesome. Uh, where else could I use that technique? Anywhere? Mm. Yeah, but I think maybe up here. I'm just going to do some 
smudges up here. There we go. And actually pick it up with my paper towel. Just because I think I d did it too dark. And that actually helps too to bring out some of those lighter faces of the mountains. So this is starting to come alive, isn't it? After uh, 35 minutes, probably 30 minutes of actual painting. Um, oh yes, I was gonna go into the um, trees. So, oops, <laughs> red is not the color I want. Um, I want blue. Here's where I made my green before, so I'll just do it right here. I want blue and yellow mixed together. And this time a little bit more blue than yellow, so I get a, this darker, deeper green. And I'm gonna use that um, to get little details out of these things. So I'm gonna very lightly kind of brush in little textures. Kind of randomized textures, but I'm moving them left to right in order to kind of look like rows. Just looking at the picture, it's kind of rows of grass about to right there, and there is some trees going up and looking over, which I can also use this color for. Um, all right, I'm, I want to make this even bluer and deeper, so add some blue. And now I'm going to go to this tree in the foreground, and just looking at the picture, looking at where the darkest areas are, and where I see a color that looks like this color I just mixed. So I see it, um, you know, hang, hanging in front of the bridge here. Um, a little bit more in this area. And then there's a lot of this color kind of in front of the bottom of the bridge and some crossing over this rock. Again, I'm gonna go over with a brighter green in a minute, but this is kind of my back shadowy, shadowier green. And boy, am I enjoying working with gouache. This is really fun. I definitely will return to the medium. Because, um, yeah, I've had it for a little while to uh, just kind of intimidated to go for it. But wow, this is really fun. And because this brush is kind of splitting up because it's dry, I get kind of uh, more leaf-like um, shapes and everything. I'm gonna add a little bit of red actually into my green, which will do what? It'll gray it out. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this little bit grayer leaves in there too, just to get a little bit of variation in those same areas. Because usually a rule I've kind of developed for myself recently, which you don't have to follow, but it definitely helps in certain ways, is to, whenever there's a color, kind of make sure there's at least two versions of that color. Whether it be one that's a little bit darker or lighter, or one that's a little bit more warmer or cooler, but something like that. Um, I don't know, I just, it works for me, and it might work for you too. So never having just one shade of red on something, or one shade of green. Um, let's see, I do see some, actually I'll, I'll let that be. For Now I'm going to go in with this uh, mountain here, so I'm going to grab this orange stuff that I was working on before, I'm going to make a little bit more I'm going to choose a little bit brighter of the orange area because it's my art after all. I don't have to make it just like a picture. I can embellish a little bit and that's what I'm going to do by making slight vertical strokes like that. Yeah, I think just bringing a little bit of orange into those hills really helps. I'm going to actually mix a little bit of that color with white. Um, to get a, hopefully, a little bit of a grassy color. White and a little bit of yellow. Yeah. And then grassy color, 
I'm going to gently put it right on top. And I think actually I need a smaller brush for this work. So I'm going to switch for a second to this brush, oh. which I can kind of use my fingers to sharpen, hopefully. Oh, it's really coming apart. Mm, I guess I'll have to use this one. So with this color, I'm going to try to get a little bit of that grass that's on top. I need more paint. And so, uh, yeah, that's good. And then there's also these lines of grass coming down the hill. Actually, I need a little bit more yellow in there, a little more red. I'm trying to make it slightly more orange. Oh, oh, too much, too much, too much. Oh my gosh, it's a little bit easy to. Uh, as I'm unexperienced at this, a little bit easy to over get put too much color in. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I think that looks good. Yeah. And where else do I see this color? Maybe on the side of this rock in the foreground a little bit. Though that's a little bit bright orange, so now I'm going to actually miss it with this grayer color, just to gray it out a little bit. Make that look a little better. Yeah, there we go. And I can kind of shade it around like that. There's actually a rock here. That's nice. Boop, 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 boop. Kind of get some of these mountain faces. My brush is getting kind of scratchy looking, and I think I'm just going to embrace it. I think I will just continue to use it and just kind of enjoy the little uh, scratchiness of how the paper is going to look. All right, I think that's good with that color. You can see my palette um, starts to look kind of pretty itself, and you can see all the colors I have here are represented in my painting. Um, let's see, what I could do is work on the sky and get more clouds, but I already got a pretty cool cloud thing. Oh, I need the bright greens. So I'm going to mix a new green, and I'm going to start with yellow, because yellow is the brightest color, and I want it to be bright. And I'm going to slowly mix in blue, hopefully slowly. Sometimes I just touch it a little bit too much. And then keep looking up because it's starting to look green. And it'll be easy to add too much blue. I think that's good right there. I'm not going to get the same color green as in my picture because because of the yellow and blue I have. They're only going to get so bright. But so I'm really more concentrated on the brightness a lot of times than if it's. And that's that's like how light or dark it is. I'm more concentrated on that than that, that specific color that it is. So adding blue or green isn't as, as important as adding light or dark. So I'm adding this kind of these brighter areas of plants. Um, when there's kind of foresty areas, I used to be intimidated by it, and I still kind of am. But when there's like a bunch of leaves and stuff and trees and branches going on, the trick is to not focus on the detail and kind of see it as texture and not try to paint every little branch. But instead, like, oh, that looks a little bit scratchy. I'm just going to make some scratches there. Or that. That looks a little bit, you know, that has some vertical lines and then some splotches. Then add some vertical lines and splotches. And it's a little bit hard to get your mind to think in that way. But once you practice it, it'll come.
There. That's kind of nice. I'm liking how bright this picture is. I'm seeing that I don't have any detail in this rock in the foreground. Um, and also, I think I need to, I do need to add a little bit more of a texture to my main event here. So, I'm going to go ahead and um, mix a dark color out of this black again. So, take some black. I have jet black here, and actually, you know, while I have it, I might as well darken up a little bit under and I really want to try to keep these lines sharp though which is a little bit tricky with this scratchy brush but I think I can do it if I'm careful just might have to put my head <coughs> excuse me in front of the camera There we go. Just just darkening up this area a little bit. So that it really looks like it's under the bridge. It's very shadowed. Now I'm going to use the same black and get some of the scratchy details in the rocks. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I can pretty much cover this whole rock, I think, with this. Because now that it's a little bit translucent, I won't get pitch black. And I do want the whole rock to kind of be darker. So I'm just going to keep moving my brush in this almost half circle U shapes and cover the whole bottom of the page, which is all kind of rock. Even what I just did over here, I think getting a little darker would be good. There. Let me see how that kind of added texture to the to the piece. Cool. I went a little bit over the um, thing here, and that's okay. What I'll do, I'll just make a gray now. Yeah, and I'll go over some of those areas I just did, just to kind of bring them forward. When you have a lighter color, a lot of times that pulls it forward. If you push a darker color, push it back. So now I want to kind of make this look a little bit bumpy. So I want to have lighter areas and darker areas. I'll even mix a little bit of this light yellow in there to get the brightest area of the rock right over here. Um, there's these bright areas right here. So yeah. If you just kind of keep going and keep looking with a critical eye at your drawing, you can keep pushing towards reality. And I'm finding that this gouache really works well for that. I'm going to take this dark gray and also put it again up into the mountains a little bit. It's not even that dark. I might have overdone that a little bit. That's okay, you know what? because I can just add water again and pick it up. I'm just going to pick up not the whole thing that I just did, but certain areas. <coughs> pick up, I just wet it and tap it with my brush. Oh, yeah. And doing that multiple times actually gives it a, a rocky sort of look. Um, I'm noticing a really dark green that's going on, so I'm going to mix a little bit of this black and green. And I'm going to put that at the bottom of this tree. Ooh, that's not dark enough, even. Hmm. I'll have to do. Get even darker. 
And then put uh, you know the darkest shadows into these same rows that I built before. Because I did one brighter layer, now I'm going to do a darker layer. It's nice to kind of go back and forth. You start every time you add a layer of bright and dark, it gets more contrasty and just kind of satisfying to look at. There we go. Alright, this is looking great. I'm really proud of this so far. Um, especially after the apprehension I was feeling to, to doing gouache. Something today just told me, Michael, you need to take another risk in front of your students. Because it's going to pay off. There we are. And I hope this encourages you not only just to try gouache and specifically, but to just pick up maybe something in your house that you haven't used yet, uh, a watercolor set or a tube of paints that you haven't touched in a long time. Just anything, anything that you've been kind of putting off because you don't know if you'll do a good job. Maybe it's a sketchbook that you got for Christmas um, and you haven't put anything in it yet because you don't know what to do. Go ahead and just start it. Even if even if you fail, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with failure. In fact, it'll just make you better the next time. So with that in mind. That's what that was my kind of thoughts in starting this today. And glad they were because they're really paying off. If you're not careful, you could find a new passion. Uh oh. Let's see. Excuse me, I'm concentrating. <laughs> All right. There we go. I think that's fairly solid. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I want to switch back to that really flat brush because I'm. Funny enough, it's the big brushes sometimes that'll give you the straightest, finest, thinnest lines. Again, I'm gonna go for this kind of dark color. Make sure I don't have too much. I can test it on my little cardboard. There we go. And I wanna try to draw those lines again, coming down the building here. So I did them before at the wrong angles. And it's just kind of didn't look right. So, with watercolor, to mess that up would be game over. Because if I messed up the lines, oops, can't really erase watercolor. Can't really fix it after it's done, usually. But with gouache, how cool is that? I can actually redo something in paint. I don't think there's really other mediums besides maybe oil paint because you can like kind of wipe it off. But really not many mediums that you can fully start something again. There is a little bit of maybe quality loss in the texture of the paper when you fix something up too much. But it's very, uh, very slight. There's a beam running across the bottom of this that I kind of want to capture, but I don't want to mess it up because I do like that light gray, so I'm just going to... It's like that. Yeah, that looks decent. There's also one going across these, like that. And there's probably one in there, but I can't see it, so I'm not going to do it. All right. 
that's looking pretty good. I think maybe a light line um, just on top of this might make it stand out slightly. Just on top of the bridge. Just to make it pop out slightly. What else can I do on here? I think maybe now a dark, let's see, you know what, I think we're just about finished here. I think maybe I'm going to go in with another really bright red, just full on straight color and put that on here just to, just to make these pillars pop a little bit more. make it pop. What a like funny thing to say about art. <laughs> Just make it pop. Funny the things we say to describe something. What I really want to do is make it a little bit brighter, more interesting. Because it doesn't, nothing's actually popping. <laughs> but did you know what I mean? Maybe you did. Cool. Now I think the only thing to do maybe once that red dries and it all dries is to add a little bit more um, blacks just in, in these lines and maybe around the red in order to uh, really bring it out oh, a little bit into the, uh, into the rocks too. I think I could add that now. I'm just going to add a little bit of black. Not all the way pitch black, but dark black, just to these front faces of this rock, because looking at the picture, it's a little bit darker down here. Just like that. It's also a little bit darker coming around this rock. Again, I might have had it close, and then I made it too light, it's okay to just keep kind of, at least with this medium, it's okay to keep second guessing yourself, which is pretty cool. And going over it, of course there probably is, maybe, I would guess like three or four times would be the max that you'd want to do that, or else the paper would start to get shredded a little bit. I think the top's now probably dry enough for me to finish this off. I'm just going to do a nice hard black line there, and the one up there, just to really make it fine. And I need a little bit, there we go. And maybe just a little bit of this branch is coming up. There. I think I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it on that. I could go in and try to put some clouds in, but I'm liking the delicateness of the of the uh, sky. What do you think? I think yeah, I think I'm going to leave it. I don't want to mess it up. I'm happy with it. I think it could be a little bit better. Ah, whatever. I'll just risk it. You know what? I just had a whole spiel about how you should just take chances. It might turn out good. might turn out bad. So in that spirit, here we go. I'm gonna just going to take something that's already kind of working and try to make it a little better. So... Um, Actually, I want it mostly white, so I have a little bit of blue on my brush. So I'm going to actually take a lot of white and just make a nice white color here. Now I'm going to work that around in my sky. 
and hopefully this will give the sky a little bit more movement. So oops. that's what I don't want is I don't want it to go into that roof and mess up the integrity. So now I'm gonna scrub it it's a little bit more carefree once I'm not so close to that roof. But now since I'm close to this uh, mountain I've got to be careful again. Now I can kind of scrub it away from the mountain. Okay, now I'll mix it with the blue and get the bluer areas of sky. Mixed in there, mix it back with the white, kind of going back and forth again until the sky has a nice natural look to it, which it already is actually quite an improvement from what it was, so there you go. More proof that you can always try something new, sometimes make it even better. There. Alright, there we go. Now it's done. And that was a painting of Honey Run Bridge in gouache. So let's see if I can get a little bit more of a detailed shot for you. Now, once it dries, I'll scan it and then I'll put it right up on the video so you'll see it. But thanks for watching.